specifically North America, Canada, and the U.S., you know, how how responsible are we for for taking these people from across the world? We have people talking out of both sides of their mouth when they say, you know, the the same people who want you to believe that Canada and the U.S. are these, you know, irredeemable nations of, with histories of slavery and oppression and residential schools and and just horrifying racism and bigotry were that but also were the destination of choice for every single country in the world right now who is experiencing some sort of refugee crisis so how do we how do you square that how do you how are you such a a a horrible you know uh ethically bankrupt nation and yet we're so desirable that we need to take in all the millions of people annually who who would kill to be here i just i don't i don't think that that works yeah you you wouldn't have so many people wanting to come over if the conditions here for them were really that were like worse than where they came from yeah. um it, it's also yeah, you have to acknowledge implicitly that it's worse where they came from you have to acknowledge that if there if there is a reason why there are people uh, dying in in rafts crossing the English Channel to get to the UK. Like there, there's a reason why they're doing that. So one other point on this is, uh, you have this this specific idea that, well, racism in North America and Canada and the US is at, at its highest, and they think it's just well, it's a racist country, and they distort the numbers and they treat it as a endemic that we need to fix. And what we don't realize is that there is plenty of racism in countries. Just because somebody has, somebody could be two shades of brown in the Middle East, and they have plenty of reason to hate each other. Yeah. Same thing in India, they have a caste system. Yes. There's no shortage of racial hatred for, well, even sometimes it's it's just tribalism focused on some quality and sometimes these qualities matter and sometimes they don't. Sometimes you can't even define these qualities. The caste system is like, well, the same thing of like, well, you're upper class versus lower class. You're, well, your family bloodline is better than somebody else's. Therefore you should be treated a different way. These things exist in these other countries and we're opening up the gates. And to think that these same problems and these same patterns and these same systems and or racial tensions wouldn't be brought over. They're just, they're not erased when they come here just because Canada is a welcoming place. Well, if it's just a welcoming place, what you're doing is you're just opening the door for new forms of tribalism to take hold. Because if you impose, let's say we, if we had immigration, we had strict cultural, if we say like, well, you got to, adopt these cultural values and Canada is super strict on it, maybe it, you'd be filtering out and you wouldn't have some of the good things from other cultures. Maybe that'd be lost, but you'd also be filtering out some of these like negative effects, this tribalism that'd be brought on. We're already seeing it with like interracial group violence in Canada. Like they're between protests, between the, there, there's no shortage of it and there'll be no shortage um, in the future is, mm-hmm. is my, my feeling anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There, there definitely used to be a, um, a bit of a, I would say more of an emphasis, even in Canada of, um, of we, we really had a strong emphasis, I would say in the, and I can only use my personal experience for this one. Cause I'm a first generation Canadian. So when, what my, parents told me anyway that when they when they were attempting to come when their families were were trying to get into Canada it, it was a long process it took a long time like many years multiple years um you had to do you had to uh you know certainly pass a very difficult citizenship uh, exam you had to know a lot about the country there there were people at the time they you know kind of a, was a running commentary they said you know that um people would think that a, a, a newly uh, a newly um, made Canadian citizen often knew more about Canada's history than people who were born here, you know? So it was, it was something that was very highly um, prized was, was a, was the, 
the willingness to adopt Canadian values and to to become a member of this new like the the recognition that the reason why you tried so hard to get here is because you know that you're going to have a better life here than from where you came. So there was there was a bit of a um, there was more. I guess uh, it's hard to ascribe these emotions to people you don't know, but it it feels like there was maybe a little bit more gratitude from from the people who were coming, but you know, in the sixties and seventies, kind of the, that first sort of major you know wave of immigration to Canada than there is now. Well, it was, it almost sounds like you're describing well, the process was more difficult. It took more work on the individuals, and there's a sense of accomplishment for yeah. learning and passing the test and getting through that. And even I like have some friends who recently immigrated who are upset at how easy it's getting for people to immigrate because it almost devalues all the effort they went into and the steps they had to or go through. Yeah. If somebody comes in illegally and is granted like a permanent residence, like afterwards, instead of like deporting them, they say like, well, you came here, uh, it's still not the best, but we'll, we'll let you stay anyways. That is insulting to yeah. people who worked hard and yeah. the many people who come to Canada, they love Canada, they do a great job and they, they fit right in and they, um, they help make Canada a better place.